Welcome back to Photoshop. Now the technique you see here in this image is called panning. And today I'm gonna to show you how to achieve a panning effect inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now panning in action is an assignment that I use for my college students and probably panning is the one of the whole semester that they struggle with the most. Panning is the idea that you are shooting with a unusually slow shutter speed. Now the reason you're shooting with the slow shutter speed is to get your background or aspects of the image to blur. If you shoot it too fast of a shutter speed, you're gonna completely stop the action. But to make it look like something is moving, you are shooting at a slow shutter speed so your background blurs. Now your subject shouldn't blur because you or the camera is moving at the same speed along with the subject. Now this can be difficult to achieve because there's sort of a sweet spot depending on distance and what type of lens and how fast your subject is moving to get this to all work together. So today I'm gonna to show you how to achieve this inside of Photoshop. All right, so we can see, and this was pretty well done, except for this annoying little thing here, but there's not much you can do on a racetrack to get that out. This is a really well done panning shot, nice and sharp here. Notice the movement in the tires and the blur of the background and foreground. We're gonna move on here to this image. So this is an image that somebody tried to achieve inside of Photoshop. However, they just didn't do a good job. Take a second here and look at this and see if you can find out the issue in the image. Go back to this image, look at this image, and then look at this image. So how can I tell that this is completely fake and the one before it was real? Well, it's really simple. Look at the wheels. The wheels aren't moving. They're perfectly still. So what happened is this person was probably shooting with a really fast shutter speed and it was able to stop the action of the car. That's great because shooting action is much easier than panning. To shoot a panning image and get it to come out, I've had students take four or 500 images and not get one come out exactly right. So it's a difficult thing to do. Now shooting this car in action is easy, however, you don't get the sense of time or movement in the image. Now, what they did is they came in here and they blurred the background, but what they forgot to do is give a radial blur to the tire to make it look like that they were moving as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this car, which is obviously not moving at all, and make it look like this first image that has the thing done to it. What we're gonna do is really easy. The first thing we're gonna do, and like always I try to do is duplicate my background. So we're gonna hit Command J or Control J and duplicate our background. And then we're gonna make a selection around the car. There's no reason you need to make a selection, but it's just gonna make it easier. And Photoshop is so good at making selections by itself now. We're just gonna circle this with this new tool and bam, just like that, it's made a selection around the car. And if it's not a perfect selection, it's no big deal. We can just alter our mask and fix the issue. So we have this selection, but we don't want to select the car. We actually want to select the background. So we are going to select the inverse, which is Command Shift I or Control Shift I on a PC. And now you can see that background is selected. What I'm gonna do is simply just turn this into a mask right here. So we're gonna click the mask button and then bam, so we've got white applying to the background, black hiding the car. So the next step is to select your picture, not the mask, and you go up here to filter, down to blur, and over to motion blur. So what motion blur does, and we're gonna go ahead and zoom out here a little bit so we can see what's going on, is it blurs in the direction of this angle. So we are blurring this way and this way. It's making the blur go this way and making the blur go this way. And as we change this angle, it's changing the direction of the blur. So that blur is going at that angle. Well, it doesn't make any sense to have the blur going that direction because that's not the direction the car is moving. So in this case, it's not perfectly level. It's tilted just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get this about negative two looks pretty good. Now the next 
is the distance. How far do you want it to blur? So if you just do a short distance, it's not going to blur very much, as you can see in the background. But if you do a big, it's really going to blur. Now we want to kind of find the sweet spot. And the sweet spot might be different for every single person. We're just going to go ahead and move this. And that looks pretty good. We'll just stay at 133. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now this looks pretty good, except for right around here, there's a little halo from the selection. And that's not a big deal. You're always going to run into those types of issues. So we're going to go ahead and select the mask. We're going to take our brush. Now, my brush right now is pretty hard. I'm going to go ahead and move my opacity up to 100. And right now I have a harder brush. This is be a softer brush. You want to have a smaller, harder brush for this. This is going to give you a cleaner edge. And basically what we're going to do is clean up this area right here where it's not working so well. So we're gonna make this even smaller, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint along that edge to apply the blur everywhere. Now, we're gonna go ahead and zoom back out. I'm not gonna waste everybody's time doing a perfect selection or adjustment in this mask. So we're just gonna quickly just kinda go over it real quick. And if I mess something up, it's not a big deal. I can always come back in here and fix it. But for the tutorial, we just want to get this over with. You don't want to see how well I can go over this and make a mask. So we're good. Okay, that's good enough for me. And if you mess up, don't forget, you can just hit the letter X and paint that back out. All right, so now we have applied the motion blur. So it looks like the background is moving. Now, the next thing that we have here is an issue with the tire. So we looked at this image right here and remember the issue here with well, the reason we know it's fake is because tires aren't moving. So we need to make them look like they're moving because we see the blur here. This is really easily done. You can do it a couple different ways. So you can make an, the elliptical mask and you can come out here and make a selection around it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and then I'm just going to move that selection. Now you want to make sure you get all of the rim and some of the tire. You can also used this lasso so i can just take this lasso and i'll try to be somewhat accurate it's a little bit hard with a mouse and that's pretty good so we've made the selection around this image now we don't want it on this layer right here well why because this is a playing the background our mask is being out of the car so we want to make sure we're on the background layer for this or you can easily make another layer and what we're going to do is go down to blur, but this time we're going to go to radial blur. So you have two different types of blur methods here. We can do a zoom blur where it's going to zoom from the center out, or in this case, a spin blur. I'm going to use my quality at best, and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move this around to where I think it's going to look good. In this case, we'll just guess and say 32. We'll apply it and boom, just like that. Now it looks like the tire is spinning. So we can see this front tire looks like it's moving and this one is fake. We can come back in here and we'll give this one a little blur or two. Now, since we've already picked that blur, it's really easy. You just can go up to filter, radial blur, apply the same one. And bam, just like that, we created a fake panning motion inside of this image. Then the only issue we have left is through this window. Notice the background isn't moving in the window. So what we're going to do is we need to actually apply this motion blur to the back here. And when I do this, I'm not going to do it actually at 100%. So I'm going to move this down so it's to 50%. And then what I'm doing is just come in here and paint white to apply it inside there and inside here. And now we've got this motion blur. So it looks like that that background is moving as well. And that's how you apply panning to any image inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.